In this video, I'll be doing a brief lesson on inverse trig functions. Now, you don't want to watch this video if you haven't watched my other video on trig functions where we find missing sides of right triangles. So if you haven't watched that one yet, then go ahead and watch it. Um, and please uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. Um, so inverse trig functions are used to find missing angles of right triangles when uh, the right angle, obviously, and two sides are given. So these are the notes that I gave to my students. So first, I want first of all, I'm going to go over this uh, diagram here. This is a pretty standard diagram that you'll see in your math class or in a textbook or in an online resource. So you've got triangle ABC because we really like those letters for triangles, and then you've got angle theta, which again is just a Greek letter that represents the angle. It's just a variable like x, y, or z. Um, so uh, across from or opposite from angle A is little a, uh, opposite from angle B is little b, and opposite from angle C is little c. So little a, b, and c represent the uh, side lengths of this right triangle. So usually you'll be given a triangle with some angle on the inside besides the right angle and one of the sides. And with that information, you can find another side of the triangle. So you'll usually be starting off with uh, an equation that looks like this. So let's say they wanted us to solve for either the opposite side or the hypotenuse and they gave us one of those, we might use the sine function to solve for it. So you'll start off with an equation like this and then you'll cross multiply and you'll figure out what your side is. Well for these problems we want to find the angle. So to get at this angle here, it's trapped inside of my sine function so to undo that, I'm going to use the sine inverse, or inverse sine, or arc sine, some teachers call it as well. So if I take the sine inverse of both sides, that's going to allow me to get rid of this sine function here. So on the left side, it's going to leave me with angle theta, basically cancels this other one out. And on the right side, I'm going to have still have the sine inverse of my side ratio. And this is going to be something that I plug into my scientific calculator and I'll be able to get my angle. So in general, you use sine, cosine, and tangent when you're finding the missing sides of right triangles, and you use inverse sine, uh, uh, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent to find the missing angles of right triangles. So when you are, if in terms of the difference between trig functions and inverse trig functions, uh, angles are what you plug into trig functions, and side ratios or the, you know, the ratio of two of the sides um, is what you're going to plug into the inverse trig functions. Now I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, can this be explained with um, a Pac-Man cartoon? And the answer is yes. All right, so this is just to kind of clarify why we, or how, how and why we use these functions. So if you have your uh, typical uh, trig trigonometric Pac-Man here, um, this is the sine cosine tangent Pac-Man, he's going to eat angles and then poop out side ratios. That's, uh, that's the technical term for him and this is what they teach you in college. Now for the inverse um, trig Pac-Man, you see you've got sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. He's going to eat side ratios and he's going to poop out the original angle here. And if you're wondering why this guy looks a little rougher than this guy, it's probably because he's eating this guy's poop. So just saying probably we would make you look a little rough too. So in a nutshell, you put angles into trig functions and you get out side ratios. You put side ratios into inverse trig functions and you get out angles. So that's the bulk of what we're trying to teach you here. So now let's do some actual problems. You still need to know Sakatoa because you're going to start off these problems just like we did in the last video. And then from there, you'll just be taking the inverse of both sides and plugging it into your calculator. So let's start off with this one right here, right? So what I've had my students start doing is highlighting the hypotenuse of the right triangle, since it's easy to spot, and highlighting the angle that we're using. So in this case, um, we're looking for angle Z, and I'm going to go ahead and label my uh, opposite side, my adjacent side, and my hypotenuse. So every time you go to label the opposite side, you can picture an arrow shooting straight out from your reference angle. So if I have an arrow shooting straight out from there, the side that it hits is always going to be 
the opposite side of my right triangle. This is the hypotenuse, and then the other leg has to be the adjacent side. Now because there's nothing given to me up here with the adjacent side, I'm not going to be using the adjacent side for this problem. So I have to ask myself, which one of my three trig functions relates the opposite side of an angle to its hypotenuse? So if you look at our options here, you can see that that's going to be the sine function. So we're going to use the sine function in this example. So let's get rid of that. So that means that the sine of z is equal to 14 over 20. So now it's just a matter of taking the inverse sine of both sides and plugging it into my calculator. So that's what I'm going to do right here. We've got the sine inverse. Just kind of write it the best you can. So if I take the inverse sine of both sides, on the left side I'm going to be just be left with z, because again these kind of cancel each other out. And so that's going to be equal to the inverse sine of 14 over 20. And that's something that I'm not going to be able to do by hand. I'm going to have to plug it into my calculator. So let's do that. So here's my handy dandy calculator. So I'm going to type in my ratio first, 14 divided by 20, which is uh, 7 tenths or 0 0.7. And I need to take the inverse sine of that. So if you look at your calculator, I'm going to zoom in here. If you look at your calculator, this is the sine button. And above that is inverse sine. That's the notation for, for inverse sine or sine inverse, however you want to say it, it doesn't matter. Um, so to get to that, I'm going to hit the second key and push that, and that's going to give me my, my angle, which looks like it's going to be about 44 degrees. Um, we're just going to round to the nearest whole number here. So I'll do that again. So 14 divided by 20, and then I hit enter, and then I'm going to hit sine inverse, and that's going to give me my angle, which is approximately 44 degrees. So that's my answer. So z is equal to 44 degrees. All right, and I'll show you guys how to check your answers here in a few minutes. But that's, that's that particular one right there. So let's go on to another example. So now I'm looking for angle alpha. Um, part of the scary part of upper level math classes is some of the notation. So I started using some different variables in here. So this is alpha. It's another Greek letter just like theta. It's just a variable, so don't be scared of it. Um, so we've got our hypotenuse highlighted. And if you're looking for the opposite side of your right triangle, again, picture an arrow shooting out, and that's the opposite side. You know that the highlighted side here is the hypotenuse. And then the remaining side has to be the adjacent, or adija. And we're going to look and see which one of our lovely trig functions here relates an angle to its um, opposite side and adjacent side. And you can see that that's going to be tangent. So the tangent of alpha is equal to 10 over 16. That's our... Um, equation. Now to undo taking the tangent of our angle, I'm going to take the tan inverse of both sides. And again, these undo each other. So that's going to go away. And I'm going to have angle alpha equal to the tangent inverse of 10 sixteenths. And if I plug that into a calculator, I can approximate it. So 10 divided by 16 is um, uh, 0 0.65. And if I take the inverse tan of that, I'm going to use my second key like that, my angle should be 32 degrees. And that's my answer. So angle alpha is equal to 32 degrees. Perfect. Let's do one more. So we did a sine, we did a tangent. See if I got a cosine in here. Yes. All right. So here's our 
problem right here. So again, if you picture an arrow shooting straight out from your reference angle, or the angle that you're looking for, that's going to be your opposite side. And this would be the opposite side, OPP, you know me. Uh, this would be the hypotenuse and this would be the adjacent side. So now we want to know which one of our trig functions relates the uh, an angle to its adjacent side and its hypotenuse. And I already told you that this is cosine, so if you still haven't figured that out yet, I can't help you. But the adjacent over the hypotenuse is going to be dealing with cosine. So the cosine of y equals um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 7 over 12. And then to get rid of cosine, I'm going to take the inverse cosine, both sides. And so these are going to undo each other. And I'm going to be left with y equal to the cosine inverse of 7 twelfths. I'm going to plug that into my calculator to approximate. So we've got 7 divided by 12 cosine inverse, and that's going to be about 54 degrees if I round to the nearest whole number. And as far as rounding is concerned, it's sort of a general rule with significant figures that you only can be as accurate as your least accurate number. So here we have all whole numbers. So it makes sense to round to the nearest whole number. That being said, if your directions tell you to round to the nearest tenth, round to the nearest tenth. If they tell you to round to the nearest hundredth, round to the nearest hundredth, so you don't lose points for silly things like that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is quickly go through and show you how to check your answers here. Because whenever you have an equation, you can always check your answer. So let's go back to our first example. Okay. If z is equal to 44 degrees, uh, is, if z is equal to the sine inverse of 14 over 20, which gives a, gave us 44 degrees, then that means that the sine of 44 degrees should equal 14 over 20. That's how this works. So the sine of, actually I'll do the fraction first. So let's see what 14 over 20 is equal to. All right, so let's plug that into our calculator. So 14 divided by 20 is 0 0.7. So as long as the sine of 44 is equal to that, then we did the right thing. So I'm going to type in 44, hit sign, and there you go. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, that doesn't look like 0 0.7. Well, we rounded, so it's not going to be exact. Uh, so if I were to round this to the nearest tenth to match this, then I would definitely have 0 0.7. So it's not going to be exact. All right, but it's going to be close. It's going to be good enough for you to check your answer. So if you're not sure if you set up your problem correctly, uh, take the sine, uh, sine, cosine, or tangent of whatever angle you have and make sure that it matches your ratio because it should. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look at our second example. We have alpha, I think. All right. So if alpha is equal to 32 degrees, then, um, then the tangent of... 32 degrees should be equal to 10 over 16. So 10 over 16 equals a number 0 0.625. So if we plug in the tangent of 32 degrees and get something close to that, then that means that I, we did our work correctly. So 32 degrees tangent, and there you go. If I round that to be the same level of accuracy, I'm going to get 0 0.65. So that means that I did it correctly. Last one. We'll be done with this video. All right. If I did this one correctly, then the cosine of 54 degrees should be equal to 7 twelfths. So let's look and see what we did here. So 7 twelfths is uh, 0 0.583333333333 to infinity and beyond. So 7 twelfths equals... 0 0.583, the line over it like that. So that means that the cosine of 54 should give us the same thing. So let's see. 
and there you go. Uh, it's not as close as I want it to be, but, huh, that is kind of weird. Let me do that one more time. So, uh, 7 divided by 12 is 0. Point, is that? Okay, good. And so if we take It was 54.3, so we rounded to 54, right? I'm just checking my work here, which is nothing wrong with that. So that was 54.3, so we rounded to 54, and that's, that's correct. So now we're taking the cosine of 54. Okay, so that's what it is. So we, I guess we rounded on that one more. So it's not as close as the other ones, but 0 0.583 is still pretty close to 0 0.587. So that one is the least accurate of all the ones that we've done. Maybe that's the one that we rounded the most on, but it's still correct, so I'm not worried about it, okay? Um, so again, um, in terms of your right triangle trigonometry, um, this is the most important thing to know. Oops. Um, you use sine, cosine, and tangent to find missing sides. You use inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent to find missing angles. Um, and if that still doesn't help you, then hopefully the Pac-Man monsters will. So I hope this video helped you guys with your inverse trig. Happy studying.